Hey guys, welcome back to Data Products. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be doing 3D plots with Plotly. Now generally, I'm not a big fan of 3D plots, especially in papers, um, because it's hard to decipher and pick apart what points in a 3D matrix that is plastered onto a 2D piece of paper, um, what those points mean. But in Plotly, we're able to actually click on points and move the graph around and manipulate it. So we're able to actually uh, decipher the, the data and the information a little more easily than we would on a JPEG or PNG or PDF or whatever you say a 3D plot is. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, first things first, let's pull up our studio. Clear out our previous stuff and make a markdown file. We'll call this Plotly 3D, 4D, 3D, 2D, 3D. Okay, let's get rid of that stuff. All right, first things first. First, let's load our required packages. Library Plotly. And we're gonna run that guy. Um, now let's create a random 3D matrix. All right, so first thing, we're gonna create a data frame called D, and that'll be data.frame. We will have X equals the sequence of one through 10 by 0 0.5, so we'll have 20 values. Y is going to be a sequence of 1 through 10 by 0 0.5. Um, and then that is it for that. And then we're going to create Z, which is a matrix of R norm length of X that we had just created above times length of y in the d data frame and row oops this should be a comma and row equals length of dx and col equals length of dy and let's see if this runs. I think I have too many parentheses, don't I? Um, unexpected symbol, what did I do wrong? Five, oh, just a comma. Still doesn't like that. Unexpected numeric constant. <clears throat> Missing an equal sign. <laughs> uh, like I said I think I have too many parentheses. No. Matrix R norm length dx times. Length, spell length correctly. Matrix <coughs> R norm length dx times length dy. Oh, need a parenthesis there. There we go. Okay, so z, we have this matrix um, of values. Now let's plot our 3D data. So we're gonna use Plotly again. Plot, we, D, X equals by X, Y equals by Y, Z equals by Z, right? Since it's a 3D matrix, we have an X, Y, and Z axis. Now we're gonna add surface, which is the type of plot and run it. 
Okay, so usually this is what you get, right? You'd get a uh, plot that looks like this, and if you're a reader of a paper or newspaper article or whatever this is in, it's impossible to digest. Like, okay, what is the highest peak, etc. But with Plotly, the nice thing is that we can actually kind of zoom around and we can also pick these peaks. So this is X of six, Y of seven, Z of 2.35 or whatever. And so you can go through and actually digest the data. You can flip it upside down if you want. So this is 10, 10, negative two point whatever. Uh, so it actually makes 3D data usable, <laughs> uh, so to speak. Okay, uh, let's add some more facets. I don't want to say, um, we'll say aspects, because we have facet plots. Uh, and it's not a facet, such as a topography. And you'll see what I mean by topography in a second. Okay, uh, so let's do plot v uh, d x by x, y by y, z equals by z, and then let's pipe it down and do add surface and then contours equals a list where z equals a list, show equals true, uh, use color map equals true, highlight color equals, and you just pick a color for this, I'm going to do FF 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, and then project equals list, Z equals true, and then three parentheses to close it off. Okay. Um, Love when it works the first time. All right, so as you can see, um, now on the bottom here, we've made a kind of a, a 3D map. It, like, it looks like um, a, to, a topolog topographical, topological, topographical map of whatever country you live in or county or whatever, um, where the peaks are uh, highest or you can see like color wise, yellow is the highest peak. So this little circle kind of denotes this peak here, etc. cetera. Um, so it makes it a little more appealing. I don't know if necessarily digestible because um, you can click down here, but I don't like that when you flip it, it goes to the top and bottom like that. But, um, but yeah, so you can, um, you know, really play around with it and see your data in 3D. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time playing with it. Uh, now let's look at a 3D scatter plot. So this is the last thing we're gonna do. Um, so plot, we, oh, firstly, um, let's look at, so uh, the Longley data set. So if I move this up, um, so this is Longley's economic regression data a macroeconomic data set, uh, which provides a well-known example of a high collinear, uh, collinear regression. Um, so you have things like gross national product, number of unemployed, uh, number of people in the armed forces, population and stuff. So it's just a general data set of economics or, or population and employment and things like that. Um, but it works good for this short example. Uh, so we're gonna use Longley. And then X, we're gonna use the um, GNP, gross uh, national product. Y equals the uh, population. Z equals the employee. Make sure you capitalize them too, because it's case specific. And then our marker is gonna equal list. Color is gonna equal our uh, GNP. And then, um, oh, we need one more parentheses, then we're gonna pipe down and say that add markers. And that's it, short code for this one. 
add marker plural markers. There we go. So you can also print kind of regressions, right, or 3D like this. So like uh, we have our GNP on the side here, which you see is pretty stable. We have our number of employed, uh, which increases over time. And then we have our population. Um, the nice thing is, so you can actually click on these dots, right, and it says this is what your X, Y, and Z is. We could, if you remember from the previous video, which was uh, the uh, just 2D scatter plot, uh, plot leader video, uh, you could add the labels too. So it would say, uh, instead of X, it would say employed, instead of Y, it would say GMP, instead of Z, it would say population. Um, so if you, and you could put a title and things like that. Um, GNP, you could put, you know, this would have to be probably thousands um, or maybe millions. It depends what years this was over. Uh, GNP would be billions probably. Employed would probably be millions, thousands, whatever it is. Um, anyways, so you can put those labels on there and make this a lot more digestible. But it looks... Uh, it looks good. So this is a lot better. Like I said, I don't like 3D plots unless they're able to be manipulated. Um, because if it, if you looked at this picture static like this, you have no idea the depth, right? Like this one above is, is better, but it's still not great. So being able to manipulate this with Plotly, uh, makes 3D data actually usable, uh, which is which is nice. So that's it, this is a short one. 12 minutes, this might be a record. Um, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. Um, this isn't like a tool that you'll use all the time because 3D data generally, you don't come across it very much, you don't present it very much, at least in my experience, I may have done it a time or two um, but it's a cool tool to have especially if you're you have it and you're able to present it in this format because people can actually understand it um, with that being said that's all I got for this video if you liked it click the like if you're watching on YouTube click subscribe uh, we'll continue to do more visualizations and I will catch you in the next one